Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is another tricky question. And today it is mechanics, and it is projectiles. So this is from an international uh, A-level paper. Um, I think it was October 2021, M2. Uh, so let's give this a go and see how we get on. I'm just going to change position so that I've got more space because I know that I'm going to be writing a lot right now. Okay. So projectiles, this is how I solve projectile questions. So all the information essentially is on the diagram. Uh, of course, read the question in your exam just to make sure, but um, I've already read it and I can tell you it's all on the diagram. So what I would do is to find the value of theta. Well, um, I'm going to inspect the point Q because at the moment Q is the position that I know the most amount of information about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, for the vertical, uh, sorry, for the horizontal, and I'm going to write for the vertical. I'm going to write S-U-V-A-T for SUVAT. And I'll do the same for the um, vertical as well. So this is what I do for all my projectile questions. And then um, U in the horizontal will be the component of the velocity coming out like that. And that is the adjacent to the, to the angle. So that will be 40 cosine theta. Now U in the uh, vertical is the component which is going vertically. So that is opposite the angle. So that is 40 sine theta. Now we know the acceleration in both the horizontal and the vertical. In the horizontal, it's always zero because there is no uh, forces acting against it in the horizontal. We, we ignore air resistance as standard. But obviously there is gravity acting on the object, so that's minus 9.8 in the vertical. Okay, so those are your standards. Now what's happening at Q? Well, I know at Q it's traveled 12 meters in the vertical, so I can put 12 in here. And I also know that at the maximum point, the highest point, the velocity must be zero because it's going upwards with speed and then it gets to the maximum point and then it starts going downwards. So the velocity changes from positive to negative, which means it must be zero at that point right at the top. OK, so that means I can use this side, uh, my, whole, my vertical, and I can use the one that doesn't involve t, so that is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Okay, so let's solve this. So v is 0, u squared is going to be 40 sine theta squared. Uh, 2as, well 2a is minus 19.6 and s is 12. OK, um, I can expand out these brackets to get um, 1600 sine squared theta. And this value, I'll just check, is minus uh, 235.2. Right, so we can move that over to the other side and divide it by um, 1600 and also square root it. And that will give me sine theta. Okay, that's good. Um, so sine theta is equal to, um, when I put that into my calculator, I'm not going to bore you actually putting it in, I'm just going to tell you the answer. And then sine to the minus one in order to find the value for theta, and it is 22.5. Okay, brilliant. So what does that allow me to do? Um, oh, wait, it answers question A. Perfect. Right, next, the distance O to R. Right, so now I need to inspect the point at R. What's going on at R? Well, once again, I do the same thing. I write S-U-V-A-T and S-U-V-A-T. For U, um, and this is for the vertical, of course, so let's look at um, S, let's look at U for the horizontal. Well, we know the um, theta value now, so we can sub that in to 40 cos theta, and we get a, 
a horizontal velocity of 37.0 and we can also sub it in for the uh, vertical velocity and that gives me 15.3. Once again the acceleration is zero in the horizontal and it is negative 9.8 in the vertical. Now we know that in the vertical it has traveled down 36 meters in order to be in line with the floor. So therefore the vertical is minus 36. Now the horizontal distance is what we're looking for. Um, and we don't know anything else. Now, the biggest common mistake I've, I've seen in projectiles is people think because it's hit the floor, the final velocity is zero. That is not the case. Obviously, the final velocity is going to be um, well, it's going to be a, it's going to be it's going to be a value because if it was zero, then you would hit the floor and it wouldn't hurt, is what I always say. Uh, but obviously, you have speed when you hit the floor. That's why it hurts when you fall over. Okay. Um, so what I can say is this is let's call this capital T because the beautiful thing about um, time at R is it's the same. The amount of time that has occurred in the vertical is exactly the same as in the horizontal. So we can transfer time over between these two suvats. So if I can find the time here, then I can transfer it over to there. So what I would do is I would do S is equal to U T plus a half A T squared. Substitute in, I get minus 36 is equal to 15.3, capital T, minus a half of uh, 9.8 is minus 4.9, capital T squared. This is a quadratic, I can rearrange it and I can solve. I'm not going to bother um, um, showing you how to do that, I'm sure everyone knows how to solve a quadratic. So that is going to give me my capital T, my time. Okay, so that means I can put this in here, and it also means I can put it in over here, which now gives me more information on the vert on the horizontal, which is exactly what we need. So in terms of the horizontal, um, I can do again an s equals u t plus a half a t squared, but the half a t squared is going to be zero because there is zero acceleration in the horizontal. So it's just S equals UT. So it's just 37.0 multiplied by 4.694. And that gives me a value of 173 meters. Okay, fantastic. Uh, right, so the next part is asking me to find the speed at which it hits the ground. Okay, well, um, the speed is essentially, again, it's not zero, <laughs> it's going to be the component in the um, horizontal and the component in the vertical is going to tell me what the speed is overall. So I just need to find those. Um, again, now I know this is 173. I can pick pretty much any SUVAT equation because I've got all the information, but obviously, that, well, not obviously, but the easiest one is V is equal to U plus AT. So I'll do that for the horizontal, and I'll do that also for the vertical. Oh, whoops. Okay, so for the horizontal, it's pretty straightforward. There's no acceleration, so V is just equal to U. So V is equal to 37.0. For the um, vertical, we have V is equal to 15.3 and then um, minus 9.8 multiplied by t, which is 4.694. And this gives me a value of minus 30.7, which is what you'd expect, because the object is traveling downwards when it hits the floor, so it's gonna have negative velocity in the vertical. Okay, so how do we find speed? Well, speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So what we need to do is take our two components, the horizontal and square it, and the vertical. Uh, it doesn't matter about the sign because you're squaring it anyway. And then square root. And this gives me a value of 
meters per second to the minus one. Beautiful. Like that question. Um, see you tomorrow. Bye for now.